What's going on everybody, Sean here. Today we're gonna to talk about how much money I made in 2017 as an iOS contractor, iOS freelancer, whatever you wanna call it. Now, if you're not familiar with my story, uh, basically at the beginning of 2017, so basically up until March, uh, I was looking for a job at all the major companies here in Silicon Valley. Long story short, none of that worked out. Uh, basically, I was just too early into my career. I was only a year and a half into learning Swift, trying to go for the big leagues, didn't work out. No big deal. So at that point, I decided to spend the rest of 2017 uh, as a full-time iOS contractor to see to see how that goes and to work on a bunch of different apps just to continue to build my skill set up. So what we're gonna talk about today is how much money I made. And I have a graph over here that uh, we're gonna go over more in depth to show you kind of the, the peaks and valleys, the ups and downs. I'll tell you, you know, if I was struggling to find contracts at this point, you can see how it reflects in my monthly income. And then also there are certain points where it's like I had more contracts than I knew what to do with, and that also reflects in the income. So we're gonna kind of go through all that. Real quick disclaimer though, I'm coming at this from a San Francisco lens, cause that's where I live. So I, I understand, and I mean, no offense to anybody, I understand different amounts of money mean different things in different parts of the country or different parts of the world. So if I say something like, oh, I didn't make an, a lot of money that month, and to you that dollar amount is a ton of money, like, please, I mean, no offense, this is just coming at it from San Francisco viewpoint, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into the chart. All right, here we go. So spoiler alert, right off the bat, you can see the number up here in the upper left, uh, right around 70,000. Uh, and there's a story behind that number, and that's really what we're going to talk about. Um, but the real whole reason I'm even doing this is because that is a, a modest number. And I say modest for, you know, here being in San Francisco. Uh, just the honest truth is, like, had I just really raked it in and made like 250 grand last year, I wouldn't be doing this video. <laughs> but because this is a relatively modest and like normal looking number, um, I'm fine, you know, showing this off. And like I said, there's a story behind this number that we're gonna get into, uh, you know, here in a little bit. So let me move the screen down. And what this big black chunk here is uh, next to me, this way, uh, is basically just hiding the client information because, you know, down below here, it lists all the invoices and paid, not paid, and et cetera, et cetera. Real quick before we dive in though, one little pitfall of, uh, um, you know, contracting, you can see this past due. So I still have, this is actually from November and I've been in contact with the client. Like I kind of get it. I told him he could wait a little bit. Um, but you know, sometimes you got to deal with tracking down money over, you know, two months. So there's $743 that's still outstanding. May or may not get it. I don't know. It's kind of the, uh, the pitfalls of contracting a little bit. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and scroll back to the chart here. So let's tell the story of how, how I got here, how I made that amount, that 70 grand, uh, and kind of kind of the ups and downs of the contracting throughout the year. So again, like I alluded to in the intro, my story here is you can see uh, here in February. So real quick, this is the last 12 months uh, revenue. Because I'm doing this in January, this goes to January of 2018 and cuts off January of 2017. That's no big deal because January of 2017 was a zero. Uh, so like I said in the intro, uh, for January and February, I was working at my full-time startup job. So naturally those first two months of the year, I wasn't contracting, uh, which again, like some of you may have looked and been like, wow, 70 grand in San Francisco, that's really not a lot. Again, this is just the contracting side of the story. Uh, you know, I was doing other stuff on the side to make money. Uh, my YouTube was making money, coaching, et cetera. And also the first two months out of the year, I worked at my full-time job. Um, but there's a lot of like time off in this uh, time period too, which I knew I was getting into. And again, we'll tell the story here. So for January and February of 2017, full-time job, not contracting. Uh, in March of 2017 is when I decided to quit my job and just study for interviews and make the rounds. So I knew when I quit my job in March that I wasn't gonna have an income for a month or two while I found a job. It was fine, I had saved up money, I was willing to take on that cost. But it was during this time period that if you've heard my, seen my video, and I'll probably link it up, about how I got my first contracts, uh, this is when um, I got a contacted on my alumni, bootcamp alumni website to say, hey, anybody looking for some contracting work? And again, remember where I'm at in March, I'm like, okay, I, I don't have a job right now. Uh, let, let's take on a small contract, get, get some income, uh, kind of buy me more time to find a job. That was my whole attitude. My attitude wasn't, let me go contracting full time. So here we are in March, uh, I made you know about $1,500. That was that small contract that we were talking about uh, and that was it. And I didn't, again, I didn't intend on my year. So basically from March, April, and May, I was still interviewing pretty much full time. Contracting was just a small thing on the side to just kind of supplement my income while I was job searching, right? It wasn't like I'm going full time contracting. So again, if you heard my contracting story in the previous video uh, that I linked up, uh, you know that I started with my agency with a very small contract. They liked what I did. And then we moved up to a bigger contract. So you see, I made about 3,700 that month. And again, I'm still interviewing full time. This is still like side income. 
Uh, and then uh, they put me on another project after that because they, they kept liking what I did. And this is around May is when my interviews kind of started to die down. Like I kind of like, <laughs> I'm giving up the strong word, but kind of said like, hey, let, let me, you know, maybe think about contracting full time. You know, these interviews aren't working out. Um, so I did a lot of contracting work in May and made about eight grand that month. So that was a pretty good month. Uh, now, here's where uh, we talk about the feast or famine in contracting. So I finished up these kind of little mini contracts in May that did well. And then with my development agency, they said, hey, we got a big project coming down the pipeline. We want you to do it. You're building it from scratch. It'll be pretty much 100% your app. You build it. I'm like, sweet. The catch was uh, it's not going to start for another three to four weeks. <laughs> so I didn't go out and like find other contract work because I knew I was pretty much having like a 40 hour week contract coming up in three weeks. So I couldn't go like find something small. So this is another pitfall of contracting is that I just didn't work for three weeks. Luckily it timed up as you can see here between May and June, it kind of timed up with, uh, I took a trip home over Memorial day weekend, spent some time at home. So it, the timing kind of worked out nicely that, uh, you know, I, I didn't have much work to do then. So again, small stuff here. I only made about 1800 in June, but you can see like, that's pretty big fluctuation you know, eight grand in May to, you know, 1800 in, in June. So when you're contracting, you know, you can't be living like paycheck to paycheck. You have to have an amount saved up because, you know, you could have a down month where you hardly make anything. Um, so, but right, right around here in June is when I said, all right, we're going to give this contracting thing a full-time go. Uh, so like those interviews didn't work out. So again, when we go back to this, you know, 70,000 number, just keep in mind that I was doing it basically part-time for the first six months of the year. It wasn't until June uh, that I decided to say, you know what, for the rest of the year, I'm going to be a contractor. And I started to f try to find more contracts. And that's what you can see happen here in July. You know, we got back up to 5,200 as my contract started to kick in. Here in August, now we're like full-time contracting. Uh, if you if you watch my vlogs, you know that I was doing like 40 to 50 hours a week at this point. Uh, and I still have like YouTube and coaching and stuff on the side. So you can see here through August to September, we were about, you know, roughly 11.5 uh, through those two months. And this is, again, you guys know my rate. Well, if you've been following the channel, you know my rate was uh, $70 an hour uh, for 2017. I'm going to up it for 2018 if I stay contracting. Um, but so and I was doing like 40 to 50 hours a week roughly here. Uh, and then my, my hours dipped a little bit as I finished up one major project, but we're still, you know, about 8,000 this month. And then that was steady through November and December. Uh, but I pretty much didn't. So this December number of 8,000 was carryover from November because I pretty much haven't worked the entire month of December. I knew I had a big contract coming similar to this period here, where it's like, okay, I know in three to four weeks, I have this major full-time contract coming. So, you know, I can't really do anything in between. So I guess I'll just chill till that happens. So this time period here is exactly what's hap what happened for the month of December, which is why th this huge dip off is because like, I literally maybe worked 10 hours the entire month of December, which was nice because I, I did some traveling, it was the holidays, it was a nice break, I, you know, after this kind of crazy run of going pretty hard. Um, but now here at the end of December, actually just January 1st, uh, my contract or new contract just kicked in that's going to last me through March. And that's like a 40 to 50 hour uh, week contract. So we'll be back up here for the first couple months of uh, 2018. But then, uh, like you guys know, I'm looking for a full time job. Um, not that I'm wrong, there, there's pretty good money. Like I said, if I didn't decide to go full time until uh, like six months in around June, had I been like, you know, right now, if, if I were to carry this over in 2018, I'm fairly confident I, all my months would look like this, maybe even more because I, I plan on raising my rate. Um, so it, contracting is pretty lucrative, but and it's, it's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of like unknowns involved. Like if you can line up the contracts, it's great. You can see the type of money you can make. Uh, however, if you're kind of intermittent between your contracts, I mean, you can see you can go like whole months without making any money. So it's a different lifestyle. One of the main reasons I'm looking for a full time job, uh, you know, a there's a whole like I want experience working on a major app and a major team at a major company. I just want that experience in my uh, you know repertoire. Um, but another thing is like I, the stability is nice to not have to worry about trying to always find that next contract. You know, and always kind of stressed. Uh, like right now, it's like I know I'm good through March, but after March, like I have no idea. So uh, you know, if I don't land a full time job, so uh, just kind of getting rid of that stress and getting that stability. But uh, I just want to point out again, my rate was $70 an hour through 2017, going to up it in 2018. But uh, you can kind of see the, the peaks and valleys, the ups and downs. Again, this good stretch is when I was doing 40, I was on like four different contracts, 40, 50 hours a week. It's a pretty stressful time, but you know, you get, you got paid for it. Um, and then you can see there's definitely dips where like you're not working at all for a couple weeks. And that also shows in your, uh, you know, your um, revenue. So 
All right, if you guys have any questions about this, I'm happy to dive in. Uh, you know, I'm sharing basically what I made this year. That's pretty vulnerable. Uh, but like I said, had I made, like had it been like this the whole time, you know, and I had made like, you know, 150 to 175, like I probably wouldn't have shown this. Like I would have felt that would have been like bragging. But because this is a pretty modest number, this $70,000 a year, um, you know, but you, you see, I, was, I wasn't even full-time contracting half the year and I didn't even really start until like April and, you know, a lot, a lot of, the, like I said, there's a story behind that number. Um, but you can kind of see, you know, had I stayed with this, what I would be, or if I kept part-time, you can kind of, you know, extrapolate what that would be. But anyway, if you have any questions about the contracting lifestyle, go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, if you found this at all useful, go ahead and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.